Now, the ideal birth scenario is that you pull gently in, you open the door calmly, the baby steps gently out, you close the door, not by the glass, and we all move along on our business, right? <laughs> That's the ideal scenario, but my wife said, you need to know something that might happen. And I thought she was going to say one I already knew, because I'd done a bit of research, I'd watched a few One Born Every Minutes to see how it goes, and I thought she was going to say, what might happen during the birth, John, is sometimes that back door swings open and other people get out of the car. <laughs> I was ready for that, I've seen it happen. I know my job there is not to create a scene, is it? That's just the nature of pushing. I'm not supposed to go, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> they must have got in when I was getting petrol. <laughs> <laughs> you stay away and you keep your mouth shut, right? I was all ready for that. Anyway, she went a different way with it. What she said was, sometimes during a birth, John, you go to open the car door like that and you rip the whole side of the car off. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that sounds like it might sting a little bit. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Most men don't know that's a thing. Because I'll tell you now, if men had to give birth, when that happened to the first man, no more babies. <laughs> We'd have told each other about that. A WhatsApp group would have been formed immediately. <laughs> Subject Gary. Did you hear about Gary? No? All that middle bit. Oh, you bastard! No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, we'll get a dog. Get a dog, I'll put clothes on it and call it Barry, you're not having that middle bit. <laughs> That's my bit. That's a join-in bit. So she told me that, and I was horrified. I said, I can't believe that might happen to you, and I can't do anything. And she said, well, actually, John, there is something you can do. And I said, whatever it is, I'll do it. She... <laughs> if you're going to get that far ahead of me, you can just finish the gig now and leave, to be honest. <laughs> and we have some midwives in the audience, I suspect, this evening. I said, uh, I said, what is it? And she said, well, you can go on the internet, John, and you can buy a special kind of oil, right? It's a special oil called perineal massage oil. Right, now, if you're new to the perineum, welcome to Perineum Club. <laughs> First rule of Perineum Club, wash your hands. <laughs> now, the perineum is the little strip of metal between the front and back doors of the car. <laughs> it's... It's a structurally integral piece, and it should be loved and cherished and looked after, and it does not get the respect it deserves. So you buy this oil for it. It's a special oil. I'll even recommend a company, the company we use, called motherlylove.co.uk. That's a real company. It's run by a retired midwife called Jan. So he'll send you out this oil. She'll send you a little email to say, good luck, I hope everything goes well. Love, Jan. And the reason I tell you that is her full name is Jan Bastard, and that's funny. <laughs> Anyway, you buy the oil. It's called Down Below Perineal Massage Oil, right? She ain't called it Bastard Juice because she has some business savvy. <laughs> She's not making the game harder for herself than it already is. The oil comes out, and what you do is every night for the last few months of the pregnancy, you're on the... for a bit. Um, <laughs> as much detail as we need to go into. And that's your partner's job. That's your partner's job. Because if you're pregnant, as much as you'd like to, you, you can't. It's a bit like being married to a T-Rex at the end. <laughs> the reach has gone, but the anger has shot up. <laughs> that's... That was my job. So I would put the oil on, I'd stay in my chair like that. She'd come round to me, and I would do the thing every night. And every night while it was happening, I would think to myself, what a guy. I know that's awful and I shouldn't own up to it, but every night all I was thinking was, this is exceptional work. This really is. At this moment now, you are in the top ten husbands in the country. There is no question about that. My dad didn't do that for my mum. I've never asked him. I don't need to. <laughs> it's a different time back then. There weren't even perineum back then, I don't think, when I was born. The perineum came out of the breakdown of Yugoslavia sometime in the early 90s. <laughs> it just didn't happen. I think this is incredible that I'm doing this. Give us a cheer if you've done that for your partner. Two. <laughs> Two. And they're fucking shy about it, aren't they? <laughs> That's because the minute they said that, they got that. <laughs> Three of us. So the rest of you pay us some respect, because you have never been where we've been. You've never earned the brownie points in your marriage that we have. And that probably isn't the best word for them, to be honest. <laughs> you do slip with all that oil. Um, <laughs> So, I'd be sat there, my wife would come round to me, 
and I would think about what a great guy I was. Now, she had to correct me on two occasions and remind me that I'm not the great guy I think I am. And I don't know if you've seen the news lately, it's mainly women having to remind men that they have an opinion too, and they don't always tally those opinions, do they? And what she said was, to be honest, John, we had, we had an argument. Sometimes I would forget. Sometimes we'd be sat watching telly, it'd get to the adverts, I'd be like tutting, I'd look over, she's sort of scooching the oil over like that, looking angry. I get a bit annoyed then, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think, I'm gonna fucking do it, love. You don't need to give me shit for not skipping in from work, saying, before you get comfortable, bend over, I'll get the bastard juice out of the cupboard, shall I? <laughs> think to myself, you only have to ask, I'm gonna do it, right? And then she said to me, well, what it is, John, I don't particularly enjoy this thing that we do. If I have to ask you to do it to me, that feels a bit weird, to be honest. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I'd never seen that side of it whatsoever. I'd never entertained it. She doesn't go near the bits of me I don't want her to see. They're mostly emotional, but... Um, <laughs> I certainly don't ever pause the telly and say, you wouldn't cream up my bum hole for five minutes, would you, love? <laughs> I can't get to it. <laughs> just get that cream we got from Steve Shit Sniffer over there and just... <laughs> get some of that right up there, be a cherub. <laughs> it's a horrifically embarrassing thing and I make her ask to have it done. I make her say, excuse me, my leash. <laughs> Wouldst thou massage the perineum of a sad wench such as I? Oh, God, I'm, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I feel awful. I said, give me the oil. We'll keep it here next to my chair where we keep the remote controls. <laughs> she puts the volume on nine to upset me. Oh, no, I can't be doing that. What do you want to watch next? Anything that's one fucking louder, to be honest. <laughs> so, even then with the oil, what would happen is she'd come round and we'd be doing the thing, and she'd... I, one of the other things I didn't know about pregnancy is your hips just splay out because of the weight of this. They just piss off in different directions. <laughs> So she's coming round like a sort of John Wayne crab. <laughs> Get off your horse and massage my perineum, boy. <laughs> Every step was absolute agony, and I'm sitting there thinking, what a lucky lady. So she'd come round and she'd have to sort of support herself on my shoulders and bend like a sort of closed bracket. And I could feel her looking into the top of my head, and I thought, well, I won't look up. Right, because that's why she's looking. That's what I'd be doing, role reversal. I'd be looking down saying, let's not make eye contact now, shall we? This is not a romantic dinner. This is a job that's happening, like grouting. Just finish. <laughs> and then we're married again when I'm over there, right? Look, I thought she was, you know, like a dog looks at you when it's going to the toilet. Now, a dog's looking, it's not checking you're having fun, is it, a dog? Dog's not looking at you going, come closer for heaven's sake. Enjoy it, this is a good one. It's got green in it, you like green? <laughs> There's that tin foil, it was me. <laughs> a dog is obviously asking for privacy, isn't it? That's why the eyebrows furrow. A dog is obviously saying, What are you staring at? <laughs> Could I have a minute to have a shit in the park, please? I'm tied to you. How far do you think I'm going to get? <laughs> you who loves me the most could just go behind a tree while I have a shit in public. <laughs> you don't shit here, do you? You've got that little room. I've seen you go in there. I know what you're doing there. I'm not allowed in there for a drink, never mind a shit. <laughs> so I thought, well, I won't look up. And now, it never occurred to me she wanted me to look up. She, she was looking at me because she was in pain and uh, she was embarrassed and she wanted me as the person who loves her the most in the world to look up and say, you look unbelievable and you're doing more for our child before she's even been born than I could ever dream of. It's remarkable. And now all that is 100% true. I only found out I was supposed to be saying that the night I wondered if while I was doing it, I could just look round her and carry on watching eggheads. 